to the cloud. Recording in progress. Hello everyone, welcome to the Southborough Historical Commission on Thursday, January 13th, 2022. Um, we no longer have to read this long preamble from the governor, but you know who we are and what we're doing here online at southboroughtown.com backslash remote meetings. All right, first item on our agenda is to approve the minutes from previous meetings. Oh, good, because I'm going to send you hate mail soon. Just kidding. I don't know if I like you being in Scottsdale Town Hall. It's kind of like- I know. <laughs> but listen, actually the park being there are people that I text them and I'm like, send me the minutes before I send you hate mail. <laughs> um, Kevin, what minutes are we approving? I, I read the last December thing. Second, I, I we think. are all up to date, in fact, except for uh, the last meeting, which was December 2nd, um, yeah, which is we what we have before us at the moment. Um, Look at us go. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I feel pretty good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't, is, is Dave um, with us? I don't see him. Um, no, I, unless... Seven eight two four seven zero is. Well, no, he would be. He would save. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, we're recording. I, I just I just have one small um, uh, change in in one sentence uh, of the minutes. So I was going to. Now would be the hour. Yep. Fuzzy. But you want to hear it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, page three, um, other business, paragraph two, Mr. Miller noted, Mr. Miller noted that we are on the cusp of joining the creation of a downtown historical district. I would uh, amend that to Mr. Miller noted that we are on the cusp of approval of a downtown historic district with the updating of the national and Massachusetts historic rather than historical registers. Yeah, so that's correct. The replacement of historical twice with the word historic and the replacement of cusp of joining or joining the creation, I'm sorry, with the simple word approval. That's it. Well, that's good. I'll so, be here all week. <laughs> Don't eat the lasagna. Um, I'll make a motion to approve uh, those corrections. Do I hear a second? Second. A second. second. So moved. So I move to uh, approve the minutes here and we will take a roll call vote. Ms. Battles. Uh, yes. Mr. Miller. Aye. Ms. Pfaff. Yes. Mr. Blaschke. Aye. Ms. Deans Rowe. Yes. Okay, next. That's easy enough. Moving on. Uh, Seven Chestnut Hill Road proposed demolition of Goat Barn and Tool Shed. Commission will vote on historical significance. So did you all get the packet I sent you with the uh, information? Yes. yes. Okay, so let me just start here. Uh, application. Actually, it's in the letter, not in the application. Okay. Okay, bang, bang, bang. Um, so do we have anyone here from Chestnut Hill Farm? I think DA, DA Hayden is, um, is from Chestnut Hill. Okay. Um, so I would promote her. Um, and I think Bob Murray is too. And that's just from my, from planning board minutes. So I'm pretty sure. Okay, guys, can you hear me? Trustee folks, there's yes. one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. And uh, Bob, do you can you hear me too? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? I can indeed hear you. Great. All right. Great. All right. Um. So got the demolition permit, obviously. Um. He, here's my my quick overview, and this is just my opinion and I'm going to throw this open to the to the folks we all read the explanation on this um, I personally don't have any problem with this goat barn thing which is in like a semi-ruinous state um, 
I personally, however, would like to see the preservation of this tool shed simply because it's part of the sort of ensemble of 19th century farm buildings. It's actually quite cute um, if it had, you know, received its, you know, proper uh, care. And it's also, you know, it's very much in this sort of Greek revival style and it's very much a, a, a mate to the one that's sitting next door to it. So, I mean, that would be my, my early just vote on this, uh, you know, to see whether or not, you know, we could, try to find some reuse or, or repositioning or whatever it is for this shed. I realize it's in tough shape. On the other hand, I also realize the historic significance of all these farm buildings. So that's just my take. And now I'm gonna open it up uh, to the rest of the commission. Uh, who wants to go? Anyone have anything else they wanna to contribute to this? I'll, I'll go. Um, okay. I feel very similarly as you, Michael, um, the goat barn, um, you know, from, from the photos, you can tell it's in pretty rough shape. Um, just visually, I didn't see the tool shed um, as being in, in, you know, a complete ruinous state. Um, and I'm curious from the uh, proponents if um, you've received any, like, hard, you know, estimates or hard numbers um, for the work that would need to be done in order to, you know, make it, um, you know, solid and, um, you know, safe again. If I could answer that, um, I'm Bob Murray. I am the project director for the trustees. So I work statewide on capital projects. Um, we have, um, I think 12 buildings on Chestnut Hill Farm and we have over 360 buildings statewide. Um, we've made a lot of investments in the property, you know, since we acquired it in 2010. Uh, launched the CSA program in 2015. So we've been putting a lot of uh, money uh, into the infrastructure, uh, um, bringing in new electrical service, um, a new uh, irrigation well. Um, we've upgraded some of the buildings, but um, not uncommon to many uh, farms. There there's, tends to be sort of a um, great deal of buildings and uh, often in sort of um, with all the other demands of the property, um, often in uh, deferred maintenance, a uh, fair amount of deferred maintenance. Um, so the uh, the carriage, uh, excuse me, the tool shed itself, it's about 300 square feet, it's fairly small. The roof is in very bad shape. Um, it's uh, essentially past its um, ex useful life. Um, the floor uh, joists, it, it does have a small foundation. The floor joists have collapse in the center. Um, the windows and doors are also in very rough shape. Um, and um, so we, you know, as we look at the deferred maintenance, there's a lot of competing needs on the farm. And um, we feel that this one, I think if we're looking at it, it's probably about um, $20,000 worth of uh, repairs for it. Um, one of the things that we actually use, so we do um, assessments on all of our buildings uh, on a uh, three-year cycle. And um, one of the guidelines that we've picked up from the National Park Service is a facil facility condition index. And um, when the repairs are more than 50% of the uh, replacement value, um, it is a... Um, just sort of a metrics to, to pause and sort of uh, think about that uh, investment. And we feel that this is well in excess of um, the repairs would to replace it, to fix it would be more than that 50% uh, of its um, replacement value. Um, the, unfortunately, you know, one of the things that we're challenged with on the farm, we've that by the time we got there, the two large barns um, were gone. So we have a number of these small outbuildings um, that don't provide the utility that we need. We're also, as you I'm sure well know, um, have a conservation restriction on um, the farm that the town holds and it's under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, there's a limit to the number of square foot we can have. There's a building envelope about five acres in the center. So there's a sort of a running list. We've added greenhouses, we've added high tunnels, we've added the new barn. Um, and perhaps this is an opportunity to thank the commission uh, for um, 
Now, uh, you know, have that bar, and I think that's going to be a great addition, and we're very appreciative of the opportunity to um, sort of re reuse that that building. Uh, but this this um, uh, tool shed is in pretty rough shape, and it's just that we have many competing needs, and we're trying to be very targeted with um, the dollars that we spend on the property. Bob, did you? Uh did you also want to mention the um, major site plan review and the square footage in terms of, you know, what we had presented to the planning board? Um, sure. Um, so for the um, addition of the new uh, Deerfoot barn um, onto the property, we had to go through site plan review and also review with the Conservation Commission, both in terms of our, our compliance with the uh, conservation restriction as well as uh, reviewing the project for um, a variety of um, concerns in terms of stormwater management. Um, and so it was through that process that we uh, had taken a sort of a bigger vision for the property and had discussed at this point, in addition to putting essentially the 2000 square foot of the, the new barn that we were looking at um, possibility of um, disposal of uh, to the buildings. Um, so I guess there are two aspects there. It would reduce our impervious um, space that we were, um, or yeah, um, as part of the uh, building um, permit, um, but also would also be preserving allowable um, building space for the future um, under the conservation restriction. I'm sorry, I hope that wasn't too much information. <laughs> it was a simple question. Uh, no, it was a, it was a great information. Oh, thank you. Great. May I ask a question? By all means. Um, I am wondering, it looks to me, so I'm, I'm also looking at the pictures um, that were sent and there looks to me um, a very similar mirror image um, building right next to the tool shed. What's that? So that's, there were two, I think, of the same vintage. Um, this one is, uh, the second one is slightly larger. Okay, uh, that's what it looks like, yeah. That one, uh, it okay. has a little more utility. It has a, it's a slab on grade. Um, so it's got a larger footprint and it's in better overall condition. And so we would rather sort of invest in that one um, because I think it will provide much greater uh, utility for the property. But your point is very well taken. When you look at the two of them together, they do look like, you know, they, they're very similar in look. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you. I would, I would likewise, I, I definitely, um, and um, I'm the recording secretary for the planning board. So I did um, sit through those public hearings as well. And so I've seen the um, pictures of the, the goat barn as well. And I'm definitely in favor of um, that, you know, obviously is in pretty in difficult shape. Um, <clears throat> I would similarly, you know, of course, I'd love to see that that the tool barn preserved. But to me, there's a bonus in that um, there is a, a sort of almost mirror image building that would be remaining. And because it's hard for us, of course, to to see the damage to the roof and the floor joists and all so that for me is um at least a a selling point is that there's a very similar looking building right next to it thank you i i will just add though that the building next to it has been stripped of some of its architectural detailing and mm -hmm. in the cornice and in the returns so actually from the facade appearance the the tool set is the better survivor I mean, as you see here, what I'm talking about, you know, where the, you know, yeah. the and yeah. the returns and all this, all this Greek revival detailing has still been preserved here. This has been replaced at some point with a much more modern. Um, roof perhaps style. that's something that um, if that that building needs to also be um, updated, perhaps they would add some more um, period details back to it. Well, we don't. I presume they're willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Blasky, what about you? Do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, just a couple. I, uh, a few generations ago, was part of a capital planning company, so I fully understand uh, concepts of sweating an asset and also reaching kind of a crossover point. 
between uh, the really the uh, viable value of a building and the investment that go into it. So I, I relate to that and I, I would agree that 50% uh, of the value having to be invested to preserve it um, is, is kind of the threshold that I personally would, would uh, balk at. Um, I uh, am in favor of the, the goat barn um, being let go. It, that clearly is uh, not much left um, on, on this particular pair of buildings. Um, it would seem to me that if the uh, uh, trustees would uh, restore, agree to restore some of the detail that's missing uh, that's currently on the tool shed, I would be okay with uh, not uh, requiring the, the uh, uh, retaining of the tool shed itself. Mm -hmm. It would be amenable to that. Rebecca? Um, I just have a question, and forgive me if I missed it, I was interrupted there, but what is, is the tool shed actually being used as a tool shed right now, or is anything stored in it? Is there any utility to the building? There are, um, you, there, unfortunately, every building we have uh, seems to find stuff in it. Um, yes, there is, there are tools and sort of um, signs and various storage, um, but it, it's in pretty rough shape, and as I said that before, Joyce have collapsed, so it you've got to be careful where you walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I do like the details that still exist on that one. I'm not sure if reproducing them on the next one would be quite as as meaningful. I understand that the building is um, just from a financial standpoint probably not worth restoring, but we have a different consideration here. Um, I'm kind of on the fence. I, I wonder if there could be, you know, another use for it that would make it worth the investment in this, you know, historic building. Kevin. Uh, yeah, I support um, the demolition of the goat barn um, and the regrading of the property. Um, I think that's a that's an easy one. Um, I support the preservation of the tool shed. And while I appreciate the financial concerns and the farming operation um, and the expense that would be involved in bringing the building back to um, a fully safe condition and up to snuff. Um, I think that our concern has to do with the built environment and, and the historically um, sensitive nature of the built environment in the farm. And I just hate to see another building um, lost. I think there can be a kind of slow erosion, understandably, if the concerns are to have a working um, viable farm, you know, it, it's easy to allow um, one building after another to slowly collapse and replace them with modern buildings that seems that seem more um, uh, vital to day-to-day -day farm operations. But again, um, ultimately, then th the entire built landscape of the farm is lost. And so, um, I would hope that that maybe the uh, trustees could really sharpen their pencils on the tool shed and realize that, of course, that if this is a matter of uh, an overall, uh, you know, buildable square footage, I you know, read the letter very carefully and understand the restrictions, um, the demolition of the goat barn is going to gain the farm almost 1,200 square feet. Um, and preserving the tool shed is just keeps 300 square feet, 317 square feet off the table. So that seems like a fairly reasonable compromise to me um, that, you know, you gain a huge amount of, of buildable square footage um, at the cost of holding on to that tool shed a little bit. That's it. Does anyone have anything else to add? Um, I would agree with Kevin. I would vote to vote this significantly, uh, historic of historic significance, what I'm trying to say, um, and not approve the demolition at this time. I, 
I'd like to maybe work with the trustees to see if we can't, you know, I, I'd be willing to help to see if we can raise some money or try to, uh, you know, help out in the preservation of this. I agree with Kevin. I think this is a very slippery slope on these kind of things. And if you start removing these buildings, um, uh, I understand the deferred maintenance too, but, <laughs> you know, that if this thing would have gotten some maintenance a few years back, we wouldn't be in this position now. So, um, I, I just think it's too vi too uh, important historically in terms of its you know its style and its architectural features to just you know let it disappear. That would be my vote, but that's just my vote. Um, so uh, the question would be to uh, whether or not we want to vote uh, the tool shed. I think we're in consensus. I mean, let's split this out into two parts. Yeah. Um, so let's take a vote on allowing the demolition permit for the uh, goat, so-called goat shed. Does that sound Ooh. reasonable? Mm -hmm. All right. So I will entertain a motion uh, along those lines. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Miller. Hi. Ms. Faf. Yes. Ms. Bas Mr. Blasky. Hi. Ms. Deans Rowe. Yes. Why son votes aye. So that's uh, you know, hey, Kate votes aye too. Oh, Ms. Kate votes aye too. Oh, you're off my screen. Sorry. I, you know, it's, <laughs> for some reason here, you've just seen that filter was too much. I know. Yeah, there we go. Um, great. Okay. So there's that. Um, so let's talk about the demolition of the of the tool shed. Um, so what we're voting on the his, is the historical significance of this structure. If um, we can't talk our friends at the trustees out of continuing to wanting to demolish this structure, then we would have to set up a public meeting and vote to see whether it be preferentially preserved. Alrighty, so are we all clear on that, on that process? All right, so uh, I would entertain a motion to vote on whether or not we consider this building of sufficient historical significance to vote for its preservation. Do I hear a motion to that? So moved. So moved. And a second. Second. Second for Ms. Battles. Ms. Battles, we'll start with you first this time. Uh, yes, I will vote um, to acknowledge its historical significance. Mr. Miller. Yes. Ms. Pfaff. Yes. Mr. Blasky. On the topic of historical significance, yes. Yes. Uh, Ms. Deans Rowe. Yes. And Wysan is I. So my friends at the trustees, so what happens now is that um, if you guys decide that you really wanna pursue this demolition permit, we're going to notify the building inspector that uh, we voted this to be preferentially preserved. We'd like to work with you to try to preserve this building. I think the sentiment is certainly there. Um, we now have 45 business days to conduct a public hearing to let people weigh in on this. Uh, at which time we would vote. If the vote is uh, in favor of preferentially preserving this, then there would be a nine month demolition delay. Now, that being said, you can just wait us out uh, because this is a demolition delay, not a prohibition. Um, but we hope that that wouldn't be the case and that we could work with you um, perhaps to co convince the uh, selectmen to let you serve a glass of wine or two and loosen up some pockets up there at the, uh, up there at the farm. Um, I, I would just like to say, I, I think we're not, um, I, I think we could pause on the, the tool shed and try to find some additional uses and resources uh, to stabilize uh, the structure. Um, but uh, I think we're happy that uh, we can move forward with the goat farm. We feel that that is a real uh, liability and we would like to address that as soon as possible. So I guess we're still open-ended on the tool shed and would be open to uh, discussions or other things, but um, I think we would pause on the application for demolition at this point. Great, so um, I will notify the building inspector of that, but would you then notify them that you're going to pull the, the tool shed out of the permit and that sure. we're agreeing to, uh, to the goat shed demolition at your convenience? Yes. Um, well, may I just interject with one quick thing that's not exactly related? Sure. Um, 
we are making progress on the Deerfoot barn. We, I just want, thought it, this was a great opportunity to quickly update you on what's happening. The, um, we're facing some supply chain issues, surprise, surprise, and are still waiting for the uh, doors on either end of the barn and the um, transoms. Once we are in a position where we can bring folks in, we would love to invite the Historic Commission to come and see what has been happening with that structure and see the, the just the gorgeous restoration so that you can kind of enjoy the, the fruits of your efforts and um, see firsthand how this is really connecting the agricultural history of Southboro from one side of town to the other. Well, I am delighted because as you know, um, I fought hard for this barn. Uh, against all odds. And I'm glad that it landed over there with you guys through a rather tortuous series of events, but it landed anyway. Um, so we would be delighted to take you up on that. I still am angling for the uh, Weisshahn Memorial patio, however. <laughs> 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 and Sally Waters wants, wants the restrooms, or I'll take the restrooms and, and hey. see how bad. <laughs> well, we uh, look forward to meeting you in person and having you there. So thank you for your time this evening. No Thank problem. You. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Okay. All righty. Let's see. All righty. So they have, they have gone. Okay. There we go. All righty. Moving on to item number three, update on the St. Mark's Street Park debacle. Um, well, the title says it all. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, Subsequent, so subsequent to all this, uh, and I did invite Mr. Dennington here tonight and he was briefly with us. I hope he may come back again. Um, uh, and if he would like to speak to this, I'd love to hear what his thoughts are on this because he's heading up the panel or committee to uh, look at this park idea. So I don't know if any of you followed the uh, advisory meeting, uh, not this week, not two days ago, but last week. Uh, in which Karen Galligan appeared about this and talking about the park in front of, uh, uh, you know, in front of the advisory committee. I, I got to tell you, I was kind of appalled at what was said. Um, you know, the first discussion was about how there was no other land to do this park on except this St. Mark's land, which obviously is incorrect because we're going to be talking about an alternative proposal this evening. But the other part of this was after repeated questioning about where this $290,000 that was supposed to be for this history walk went. And uh, Kathy Cook kept asking Karen where this money was. Had they received it? Yes, we have received it. Has it been spent? Yes, it's been spent. Well, where is it? The park's not there. Is it in the intersection? You know, this was this shared streets grant and there was just this back and forth. And at one point it got a little uh, piquant between the two of them because, you know, Karen Gallagher says, oh, let's not worry about these details. <laughs> and Kathy Cook says $290,000 is not a tiny little detail. Um, I still have major problems with this whole proposal. Uh, you know, aside from the fact that the planting plan is ridiculous, the tree, dead tree thing is ridiculous. We're building over uh, most likely Native American and potentially even colonial grave sites. Um, I think that there are better proposals out there and that that money would be better spent. So that would probably lead us right into the next uh, item number, which is four. So let me just um, send this out, put this up on the screen. Okie dokie, all right. Share my message desktop. Okay. Okay. Can you all see this now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, in talking with our friend Mary from the Cambridge Arts Council, uh, uh, Cambridge, sorry, Southport Arts Council, we had talked, and you know, this has been something that we've been talking about for quite a long time about do, creating some sort of uh, cultural corridor that would link the cultural uh, events of both the museum and the library and uh, potentially St. Mark's Church and uh, Faith School and St. Mark's all together into a sort of a united corridor where we could actually have events and do things. Um, I think in all fairness, this was the idea behind this park, 
was that it was supposed to enhance the whole whole working area. But the fact that it is in a, such a culturally and historically and archaeologically significant area um, just makes this to me like a moot point that would, this should not be built on. So what I've done is done a quick sketch of this to show what would be possible. Um, now, granted, I'm working off in order to do this. I, this is just a concept plan. It is to scale, but it's not anything you could build off of. Um, it's just an idea sheet, essentially, that shows you what something like this would be. We, of course, the museum, as you know, sits on the top of a rise, and then there's a considerable fall off. Um, according to the topo that the town provided, the, to the uh, topographical plan, um, there's about a six to seven foot drop between the museum and the base of the ground, which would allow for, uh, and potentially even a little bit more, depending on, on how it's surveyed, which would allow for some sort of seating nestled in the hill and some sort of stage or platform at the bottom that you could actually use uh, for performances, for lectures, for outdoor events, for school events, for almost anything you wanted, in fact. Um, wouldn't be huge, wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't seat a thousand people, but it would certainly seat a hundred. Um, and on the right-hand side of this, I'm showing you some illustrations of various outdoor amphitheaters, some much more delineated than, uh, than we're talking about, uh, much more elaborate. The top one is a really cool, this is at Swarthmore College. Um, this is their outdoor amphitheater where it's in the middle of the Arboretum. And so the, and that's sort of the idea that's been stolen for here is this concept of actually planting trees throughout that are high and have very few lower branches. So they function sort of as columns um, and to provide shade for the people who are sitting here. Um, this area here, this circular area here is actually both a slightly raised stage, similar to what you might see down here on this almost bottom picture, second to bottom picture but with a pergola or something over it, you know, shaded by wisteria that would give, again, some shade and cover and perhaps be able to hang light or speakers or whatever else is needed. Um, so the amount of money that is going into here that supposedly is already spent and received and spent. And then, and then I, you know, so, and then Kathy Cook said, well, what do we have to do to, you know, to fulfill this grant? And Karen Galgan said, and I'm, I'm pretty close to quoting her, I think, well, I guess I have to send them something to prove we did it. <laughs> and I thought, well, why don't we send them this? And say so we did this because I guarantee you that you could build this amphitheater for $290,000. Um, you know, because it, you know, it, again, it doesn't have to be this elaborate. It could just be stone benches built into the hill sort of suggesting a ruin. I don't know, but I just, I just, I wanted to float this out there because the, my main concern remains the old burial ground in this parcel. Um, in this, I did, this calls for this simply to be reforested and put back, you know, perhaps if they want to do a memorial here or something or something that had a very light footprint in terms of the depth of the soil. But I, I, I have a huge problem as a taxpayer outside of my role as on the historical commission of spending $290,000 of state money on St. Mark's property. That being said, my main concern is, is what's going on here in terms of the potential Native American graves and almost certainly uh, colonial graves in this section here that's still covered by trees. So I'm just putting this out there. Um, obviously, we don't have uh, any ability to implement this. However, uh, the Arts Council would like, as you know, would like to work with us on this. Um, I'd certainly hope the selectmen might be get interested in this. I hope maybe some of the folks on this uh, planning committee for this park that you know may consider this proposal. Um, and just in terms of thinking uh, in, in slightly different directions. The other thing that this calls for is opening the walls here on the old burial ground with a small entrance, both on the library side and on the museum side so that people could transverse through here, um, not as a major thoroughfare, but so that they could wander amongst the graves and really enjoy this uh, area. Because for now, you know, you have to march all the way up to the top of the hill and you have the one place you can get in. And if you try to exit along any of this downside, you really take your life in your hands because these stones and things are, are quite uh, treacherous. So um, I just wanted to put that out there um, and you know, hear what you guys had to say. And I, again, we, we can just launch this idea and see where it goes. I don't think we would have anything to do with its construction or maintenance or anything, but I, I thought it'd be worthwhile to talk about this because we are interested in promoting the historic nature of this 
uh, area. And, and I do think that the thrust behind this park, the idea behind it, the original idea was to create some center of attraction or attention that would be make this area more useful to the citizens of Southboro. Now, to me, I'd rather actually have something like, you know, some sort of theater to use rather than a you know, park that no one can get to. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. So I'll throw it up out to you guys. What do you what do you think? Can I ask a question? Because the, the drawing, Michael, is not oriented north south. So I'm just trying to get my head around that location. Is that the same as the area that the trees were clear cut or is it a different parcel? No, it's right here, this parcel. So this is how the road now goes. This mm -hmm. is the same mark. So the top is west, uh, right is north. This is done exactly the same way. This came from the plans that were provided by the town. So these are you know, built all off the, the town plans. Yeah. So this is south, here's Pilgrim Church, here's the old burial ground. Uh, here's the library down, uh, down on this end. And now there's this little tiny section here. There is, of course, uh, you know, this road actually in real life, you know, obviously, you know, uh, goes down here now. This is all becomes this new set parking area for St. Mark's, um, which was also paid for by town funds, seemingly. Um, but yes, this is the area that's been clear cut for this. And this is where we, uh, we were fighting to try to preserve the trees of the big oak trees that were here down along Route 85 and the stone wall and stuff. But the idea of reforesting this would be to put back, not only to create something that's minimally invasive for this potential gravesite, but put back the windbreak mm -hmm. um, to the old burial ground, um, which is now, as you know, just completely bare. Um, did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So it's not, it's not exactly the area that was clear cut, but it's across the road from it. No, yeah. no, no, it is exactly the area that's clear cut. So what the area that, so St. Mark Street, originally went this way, right? See my, where my curse is going? Yep. It, went, it kept going this way and it, it ended way down here. So they cut this, they cut, they moved the road, t -t 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 -t. they clear cut all of, this was all wooded on both sides of this area, it was all right. wooded. And now this was all been clear cut and it's all empty now. And right here is where they're talking about building this park in this tiny little area here in this little section um, that the town has presented plans for. Uh, right, but the, sorry, the parcel that we have the, the concept of a, a little amphitheater, was that part of the clear cut area or was that adjacent to it? No, no, that's adjacent to the museum. That's that yeah. parcel that's just the open grassland that's there in the museum. It's about an oh. acre and a half, I think. That's what uh, I've been understood between the two. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I did, and, this is, and this road is the driveway to the Choate Mansion at St. Mark's. So this is the front of the museum here. Uh, and this is, you know, this is, it's just an empty section of land. Yeah. Owned by the town. Kate. Sorry. Um, I think it's lovely. Um, what is your, um, what's sort of the plan of attack? In my opinion, um, I know that they were trying to create the committee. I can't remember if the committee is um, has been appointed yet. To me, that would be a, a you know a first stop is maybe presenting this as an option to them as they're trying to you know start determining what might be some options for that area. I don't know if yeah. that was already in your thought process. Well, I you know as I said, I invited Andrew here. I, I don't know if he's still he was with us briefly. Um, I don't, he could update us because he's the selectman in charge of this. Oh. Uh, I'm certainly, I will certainly send it to them, obviously. Yeah. You know, we'll send it to them and I'm happy to explain this concept. Um, I don't know what the reality is of, of shifting these funds over. Uh, you know, right. I'm sure that they'll say, oh no, we can't do this, we can't do this. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I, perhaps, I, perhaps you can, because there was, there was such lack of clarity about you know, supposedly we receive these funds and all we have to do is send them something to show them that we did something with it. And, you know, it was just entirely vague. So, you know, hopefully maybe advisory or some other people can get some real clarity here about whether or not these funds have to be expended on the St. Mark's property. Um, I don't think, frankly, they care whether they get a, they wanted a playground uh, right. for the kids, right? Right, right. Uh, which the CFO, uh, Rob, was very clear about. They, that's why they thought they were doing this. They're not getting that under any circumstance now. So, and all they, they are getting this enhanced parking. So I, I really don't think that they would care. And I think frankly, they would be happy to help us uh, do whatever. 
And well, a, a selling point too is um, I know that um, a big part of the master plan update is, um, you know, around sense of community. And um, it's certainly a, a, a lovely opportunity to create that, you know, create more outdoor also, you know, if you think in terms of COVID and that it's not necessarily going to ever fully go away, it's a nice opportunity to create a sense of community, have different outdoor, um, you know, outdoor events. Like, I agree with you. I just, I don't know how the transfer of funds, if that would even be an option, but um, yeah. I certainly think it's worth proposing because it really is a lovely idea. Yeah, and I don't know, uh, these funds, may, they were supposed to sunset on the December 31st. I don't know if oh, they right, right. Had, um, whether, you know, the Shared Streets program is still in operation, I believe. I, um, whether it's still funding things, I don't know. Um, are there probably potentially other funds? Mary uh, from the Arts Council said that we're potentially we might have other opportunities there. Um, I talked to uh, Marguerite Landry at the Library Trustees. I showed her an early version of this. They're very excited um, about something. So, you know, well, we're to do story time. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I mean, can yeah. you imagine? I think this thing would have weekly use during the season. I I would bet you a dime a dozen it's because it has proximity to a public restroom in public right. buildings. Uh, it's you know centrally located. There's plenty of parking here behind the townhouse. Okay. Um, well, I told you that they have a small version of one right behind Woodward. You can walk right through my back property to it. And it is, they do different outside classroom events out there. And it, it's lovely. I mean, it is lovely. Yeah. So, I mean, whether it's not this, you know, it's just, I would, I, I think, yeah, well, you know what I think, because I've said it yeah. all. <laughs> uh, my, my opinion is, you know, first, first stop is probably to go to that, um, that committee. Um, yeah, and I don't think it's been formed yet, as you said. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember. There's just a lot of um, different committees that are um, trying to be formed, and I just can't remember if they've appointed everybody or not. I'm sorry. I, I wish I remembered, but I don't. It has um, not been appointed yet. That's okay. I thought so. Um, uh, you know, and when it comes, like, uh, you know, I think this would be just, it's an option because that's sort of they're going to be their charge, right, is to determine some potential, like what would be, a good option for that area, but I don't realize it's a different area, but. Yeah, well, I mean, what I would argue to the committee is that the best option for this area is to reforest it. Right. Because yep. of the historical sensitivity of the, of the area and that we should not be constructing walkways and things on top of potential graves. Right. But, you know, that being said, I think this is also an opportunity to look at some other ideas, so. Yeah. Um, Michael? Yeah. Has, uh, Regarding the the original original uh, parcel of land, has any decision been made about surveying that with ground penetrating radar to see what exactly is there? Because I, I it, it's um, perplexing to me to think that they that anything should be done with it before that has been completed. Well, so ground penetrating radar is no longer an option given the amount of disturbance to the soil. So okay. what would have to be done is a. Uh, uh, method of excavation that literally brings in a backhoe and you you literally move down in strips um, down three or four feet with an arc supervising archaeologist right slowly scraping the surface up to see what pops up and then you move over next and do the next strip and then move over and do the next um, I made some inquiries about this um, and because of covid and because of supply chain issues and everything else everything there's they're hugely behind there's three or four firms that actually do this kind of work um and i didn't even get to the point of even getting an estimate as to what that would actually what that would actually cost um I, you know interestingly i don't see a lot of support for this kind of thing outside of our group um it would seem to me that you know that this would be basic um, however, I think I could probably get my craw around actually replanting it just with trees, mm -hmm. you know, without this kind of survey. But if it would involve some sort of something with real excavation, like walkways and, and uh, you know, artificial creation over this stuff, you know, there I start to draw the line. That would be yeah. my personal opinion. That would, that would be quite disrespectful, I think. But um... Other than that, the idea for the amphitheater, it's a great community oriented uh, 
proposal, but I could see the library using it. I could see us using it um, at the Historical Society. Um, I could even see potentially Veterans Day services being held there rather than, um, you know, everyone crowding around that small space up there. I think there's a, a ton of possibilities there and it would be a really nice thing for the town. Mr. Miller. Gosh, I, this is a very large topic. Um, <laughs> so I may do some zigging and zagging, trying to formulate my thoughts. But I, first of all, I mean, what I think what we have in front of us is really quite beautiful, you know, and and exciting and wonderful. And you know, there's some questions about I. I'm mean, in the weeds in my head about is there a sufficient drop off in the grade to allow for the kind of step thing that we're six feet doesn't sound like a lot to me, but I'm sure there are ways around it. Um, it's a beautiful proposal and I would like everyone who's already spoken. I mean, I would think it, of it as a huge asset for the town. Sure, used by historical, used by the library, used for general town events, used for veterans celebrations used by the way um by saint mark's boy you know it is right adjacent to their athletic fields i, I can in my mind's eye imagine um a lot of their students sort of lounging around um in that location when it was otherwise unoccupied or in fact holding outdoor classes there on occasion um so you know i, I would think that they would be interested in it um i i I mean, I can't say enough of what I think the idea is. And I, I wanna remind um, anyone who, who's in attendance um, that this idea um, sort of dovetails with, um, I think Michael's already made that clear, um, with conversations with the Southboro Cultural Arts Council and Mary Pikarts about, you know, a downtown cultural district. And, and um, they were very excited about this, this concept. Um, I didn't you say, Michael, that you and Mary had both been sort of thinking of this idea or well, she really that you said I already thought of this or yeah, she claimed that she had actually been thinking about this herself. Um, in that case, I think that's a thing of great two minds thinking right. alike. Um, so, yeah, is, so I just, by, by the way, just to answer your question, if you look at these different pictures. Um, every single one of these has a major shift in differences in grave. Look at the one in the very bottom. That's probably right. each one of those little things. See, now the, there's an interesting way these are constructed. So these have these long, wide, some of them have very wide grass terraces, like the one, the Swarthmore one on the top or the one on the bottom. So you aren't meant to sit on the steps. These are steps um, that you just walk up and you put lawn chairs and other things. So it's a, you know, bring your own chair kind of thing along the way. Um, and they're just literally sitting platforms. Some of these are actually like benches, like the one in the middle here, where they're actually raised benches. And then some of these are both. So the one at Swarthmore, you can either sit on the stone, they're high enough, or you actually can put your chairs on is what they do uh, also for commencement. But as you can see on the one on the bottom, the, the total grade difference here, this, it, I doubt that this is more than four or five feet. If these are maybe a foot high, I doubt it, probably eight inches. So you one, two, three, four, five. So they've gotten this whole theater in less you know, than under five feet of depth. Um, I, I don't have to show you here. I don't have the drawing here to show you, but the, the, the very rough thing that we got from the town actually showed a rough topo. And if I'm reading it correctly, there is a drop from this point here to this point here of six or seven feet, um, depending on how they uh, they marked it. Um, unfortunately, it didn't have the, actually the, the numerical numberings it normally does showing you 135, 134, 133, et cetera. That, um, but that being said, you know, there's all sorts of ways to design this kind of stuff right. um, with minimal slope, high slope, um, you know, more formal, less formal, semi-ruinous in appearance, you know, uh, you know. And all those things also drive the cost because the simpler it is, obviously, the you know the cheaper it is. But the basic concept works, you know, and I think pretty much any any space. So yeah, I mean, technically, this is totally feasible. Right. No, I I see that. Um, and I I like I said, I I love the idea. Um, where it gets, you know, all this gets very thorny. 
um, for all of us is that there are, in my uh, view of the matter, there are, there are elements of this that are within our purview and elements that are not. And separating out the two um, is going to require a great deal of tact. And you know, even on the, the the issue of the already cleared St. Mark's property, of course, the idea of um, whatever one's view of it, the idea of reforesting it would, of course, involve a reversal, a major reversal of what's been set in motion, and um, that's always difficult for the parties involved and the parties that have made the decision in the first place. So, um, you know. I, and there's the matter of the money, um, which I, as I understand it, I was, you know, listening to all those meetings myself, and it seemed like the money has been spent, so that already, and so that any funds that are going to build any park anywhere, whether it's on the St. Mark's parcel that, um, you know, they're apparently going to allow us to build a park on, or if it's on the town land adjacent to the museum is going to involve um, finding it, as I understand it. Um, I could be wrong. Again, it's not my, my area of specialty. I just listened to the meetings. Um, that they're going to have to find the money somewhere. And I don't know if that's going to come from the um, you know, ARPA feeding frenzy that seems imminent, or if it's going to come from some other earmark or grants or whatever. But it seems to me that. Um, on the matter of the outdoor amphitheater, that proposal, at least my gut feeling, is that it would be best presented as an idea that stands on its own merits rather than something that's in competition with whatever the, the select board decides they want to do um, with the St. Mark's property. And the merits of that proposal can be argued separately. And if the town then is presented with a decision about one or the other, um, that'll again be up to the select board, presumably after a series of you know, public hearings in which everybody can voice their opinion on the matter. I, what I'm trying to say is, I, it, it, it just seems like a very um, complicated situation, part of which is um, in our purview, part of which is not, part of which is a matter of practicality, a part of which is political. Um, and I, all I can say is that the, the matter of the, the St. Mark's property in that park is a matter of, for public discussion and the decision by the select board. They haven't constituted um, their committee. Um, I'm not sure if everyone on historical is aware that the proposal um, that was brought forward by Mr. Dennington, who's responsible um, for putting together this committee, was originally that it was going to include, um, I believe, a member of the select board, a member of planning, a member of historical, uh, possibly library trustees, I believe open space. I, I forget the exact constitution of it, but, and then with one or two um, at large, you know, general citizen kind of thing. And that was supported by the chair. Um, however, after discussion among the complete um, board, they finally arrived at the idea of an entirely sort of ad hoc or at large committee with no formal representation uh, from historical or planning or library. Um, my understanding was that members of those committees or, or commissions were invited to step forward if they so wished, and the select board would make their decisions. And I think that's where it stands. Um, so, you know, what to do, if anything, about that, I think is also because that occurred after our last meeting in early December. Um, so, that, that's, I, I just laid that out as a fact, um, as best I understand it for everyone to think about. Um, you know, so as Kate said, wh whether you, somebody wants to be on that committee and then go to it and say, well, look, here we have what we think is a better idea. I, I don't know if that's the right or the appropriate um, step. And again, it, I, 
I just don't know. It's so complicated. I have a hard time sorting out my feelings about it. Cause like I said, I, as I understand it, the money's already gone. Um, and well, the, the money can't be gone. And, yeah. I mean, it can't be gone because they still have to build a park. Right? Well, I mean, they, they spent it. It was spent. I, again, I don't want to get into the weeds in it cause I'm, I'm not, I'm not an expert on it. All I, I know what I, I believe I heard was that the money that, um, I, I think there was some underestimation of the ultimate costs and that, that um, just the site prep has sort of gobbled it all up. Um, all, all of which to say, it, it's kind of a moot point to me because I'm not the decision maker on any of this stuff. I just think we got to, here's this beautiful amphitheater proposal, which I like very, 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 very much. Um, there's some empty dirt now across the street. I don't know what the fate of that is. We don't have any official hand in it. Um, well, you know, again, I, I want to remind everyone that the, the area slated for this park is not owned by the town. It's owned by St. Mark's and ultimately they make that decision. So if a sufficient number of townsfolk, regardless of whatever other boards or committees or select boards or think, feel strongly enough to discourage St. Mark's from participating in this revised plan, then that's what's going to happen because in the end of the day, they own the land. And you know that's, that's my problem with this whole thing from the very beginning is that you, at the end of the day, we're not in control of any of this. I mean, they could simply say, no, we're going to do whatever we want to do here. So I, I agree. I think there's three issues. One, the first issue is this extremely historically significant sliver of land and what happens to it. And there, our duty is clear. We are bound by oath to the state to try to preserve this area and make sure that there is no further destruction to the old burial ground or any graves in or outside of it. That is certainly our bailiwick and we will fight for that. Um, the matter of the funds is for the selectmen and advisory to figure out what happened. But if these funds could be diverted into something else, I would urge them to do so. The amphitheater proposal, we're just launching as an idea. And after that, it's up to someone else. I mean, that's not our gig. Uh, but I just think that it was interesting exercise since we've talked about this, we've actually talked about this for years now and uh, talked about, uh, you know, with with Mary just two months two months ago, I guess, um, about this whole process and her finding those funds. So you know, again, even the shared streets fund, I mean, there may be other monies for this, and you know, maybe, and I'm sure open space would be interested. I'm sure planning would be interested. I, you know, I, I don't think anyone has to claim ownership of this, but I think it's important to have some idea of what's possible, and to take a very firm line on any development on this park area. You know, we we wrote to them and said, to the Board of Selectmen, and said, please stop work on this until we can get a survey. The survey's not been done. They decided to go ahead and build this park on potential grave sites. I mean, if, you know, if that needs to be stopped or we wanna to try to stop that and get public opinion, then we go to St. Mark's and say, hey, I mean, do you want to be responsible for the potential desecration of these graves? So, I mean, I think, that, so I, I agree, Kevin, that there are multiple issues in this. Um, I don't think you have to be committed in any one way or shape or form now. I just wanted this to be informational. I wanted to hear what you guys had to say. And I wanted to launch this idea out into the public forum so that other people can take it up and comment it on and maybe other boards and committees can think about it and, uh, you know, and see where it goes. You know, raise the issues, see where it goes. Annie, you've been quiet down there. Yeah. Um, so my my initial reaction to this is the, you know, the amphitheater looks lovely. Um, I think it would be a really nice addition to um our our downtown area there. Um, I'm by no means in, you know, expert or even somewhat knowledgeable in any of this. Um, but I would be a little bit concerned from, from um, no, surrounding noise from, you know, traffic on Route 85, traffic on Route 30, um, and the St. Mark's athletic fields um, that are, you know, immediately adjacent to that area. So as I see it, that's just one thing that um, I think might be an obstacle with the, with the construction. But again, I don't know anything about this. So maybe there's ways around that. 
Um, I think Kevin articulated pretty well um, some things I'm feeling about, you know, the the multifaceted, um, you know, complexity of this situation, um, you know, and, and what's under our purview and what's not. Um, so my, I guess my um, feeling is that I would be in support of, you know, proposing this amphitheater idea um, because I think it's it's great and I think it's a, a very good, um, you know, would be a great addition to our, our area, but kind of separate it from, you know, the issue related to the St. Mark's Triangle. Um, I do see that it, it could be a good alternative, um, you know, if we had to show that there was, um, you know, something done with funds in that general general vicinity. Um, but I I really feel like it is separate. Um, and, you know, there, there's this committee that's been, you know, in the process of being formed, um, you know, to kind of evaluate what to what to do there. And I think our voice is better used, um, you know, to preserve that area and make sure that, you know, any further disturbance to the grave sites doesn't happen um, rather than, you know, push the alternatives, even though I am in favor of the alternative. Um, I do think, as Kevin mentioned, it might be beneficial to have representation from our commission on that committee, um, because this is something that we've we've discussed so much and we're so um, invested in in terms of um, you know that that the gravesite um, area. Um, so I think that might merit further discussion with our commission um, on whether we you know we want to have a you know, a, a seat there, even if it's an at-large member, um, you know, maybe nominating someone to participate. Well, we were very pointedly not asked to participate in this. So, um, you know, thus, I think, it, you know, part of that is the fact is that we're talking about this now. You know, mm -hmm. had we been asked and had Mr. Dennington's proposal been uh, implemented, um, all the interested parties who have already talked about this uh, considerably, and frankly, who have the expertise, like planning board, uh, would have been part of this. But that is not where we're at today. So, do you uh, know why the selectmen um, voted not in favor of that proposal? I didn't follow that meeting. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I'll I'll try to go back and, and yeah, go back and go back. They were deadlocked uh, about this and. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a question to ask. Because um, I, I think obviously there's there's so many you know parties that in town that this impacts um, that you would think that you know library open space historical um, a lot of different co committees and commissions would um, you know have valuable input. You know, my my feeling is that until you do a survey on this, you should do nothing. Right. You know that, and I, you know, I will continue adamantly to argue that. I mean, you should not have started this process without some sort of survey, and you should not be doing anything that involves any sort of permanent structure on this land until it's surveyed. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, but you know that's that's. Michael, I think that should be our focus too. I yeah. think that this is a historical and archaeologically sensitive spot. That is definitely our purview. It's you know. Um, well, what precisely and, would you, would you, well, that's for you know. discussion, right? I don't know what we could do next, but I think that, that the very idea of doing anything more without knowing what is there is, um, unacceptable. I may agree. I just, may I just add one more thing to my, um, sure. my initial um, thoughts. So one thing I wanted to wanted to um, point out is that I love the idea of the potential new entrances to the old burial ground that um, you've worked into this plan. And I would love to see that, um, you know, come to fruition regardless. I think it's, it's such a great idea, whether it's part of this plan or, you know, a separate initiative. Um, I think that that has um, a lot of merit that you know, somehow I would, we would benefit from um, pursuing. I totally agree. 
Michael, can I ask a, a question with this? It's pursuant to what Annie just talked about. I, I, I love the idea as well of the openings in the stone wall, especially as someone who regularly climbs over those existing stone walls with my dog in my arms <laughs> um, on a very regular basis um, because we like to walk around in there. Um, I think that's a great idea, but it leads me to the thought that in this St. Mark's property, I, you know, my understanding, again, I, I, you know, I feel like I'm trying to report overheard news um, that the select board appears to consider um, the matter closed about potential graves or whatever could be in that property. They, they I, I think, consider it a settled matter. And on the idea that, you know, nothing's been brought forward um, that to them suggests sufficiently otherwise. Okay, that's stipulated. If one were to um, assume, well, A, you know, if you're to try to convince um, them otherwise, th there has to be some way to bring forward evidence. Um, and if we can't do it, um, they're not gonna do anything. Um, but I wonder, let's, let's assume that there are um, burials of some kind there. Is there some way, and I ask this as a question, I don't know the answer, um, to th that in the same way that you walk when you walk in the old burial ground, or of course in any cemetery, you're walking all over people all the time. Is there some way that that property could be graded, have a pathway, at the same time be mostly we retreat or reforested, but in a respectful way that in fact would not further disturb and that you could walk through a kind of beautiful garden there or a mostly treed space knowing that potentially there are native burials of perhaps hundreds of years on this ground and that it is treated as sacred ground um, but in other words, can it be park-like, thus satisfying um, the, the, um, the impulse, I think, of the select board currently, while also being mostly retreat and also respectful to what is potentially underneath? Is that possible? Of course it's possible, but it's not possible with the plans they're currently proposing. Well, I mean, that, but that, that's why there's, of course, there's going to be this committee uh, well, no, wait, now, wait a minute, I, because my understanding that this committee has the purview of it is only to decide what's in the center of the circle. It's not to alter the design. Ah. It's not to make any changes to the major components of this or the dead tree sculpture or the planting or anything okay. else. Okay. It's just to get together to say, hey, what's in the center of this now empty circle where there was a playground? I, I think you, you might be right about that. And this is where it leads me to sort of the other part of this is that I honestly, and again, I feel like I've had a beat a similar sort of drum in other meetings. Um, <laughs> so I apologize, but I just think the only way um, you, you either try to get the interested parties together and have meaningful, productive, you know, cordial conversation, or we try to do this sort of broadside. I mean, I, I, sometimes I, 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 I feel like I'm in a rowboat coming up to the USS Constitution, you know, <laughs> about to launch a, a full volley of cannon, you know, and I'm just down here in my little rowboat going, ah, can we talk a little bit first? Um, is there, you know, some way to, I mean, I just look at your, your, I've got it up on my other screen, at your amphitheater and the property there and the old burial ground and the library. And it's such a sort of sweet spot for the whole town. And again, it's one that I visit on a very regular basis. I just think, can, is there some way to sort of, the 45 parking spaces are going in whether anybody likes it or not. I hate to tell you, you know, that's a done deal. Um, the easements, everybody can argue about that, all that kind of stuff. But the, the bottom line is I, I would love to get 
to a solution that that showed a mostly wooded area where that triangle, the disputed triangle is, and that showed an amphitheater someday and access to the cemetery and happy people walking around in it. But I don't know how we get there. Um, and that's the part that I'm interested in. Can we, um, Kevin, do you think it's um, feasible to put that in um, a letter from the Historical Commission that we send um, to this group, this working group, once it's created? Um, uh, you know, and, and the way you said it is lovely. It, it's a compromise. It's, um, it's a way to respect that area. It's, um, you know, maybe that's the, the first step is sending, you know, a letter from the Historical Commission explaining what you said to create a walking area and access to the burial ground and all that. Yeah, I mean, I'd absolutely. But the, 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 the War Selectman has to be willing to pause this process and reconsider other ideas. And, and without I, hard proof, because we can't get that if we don't look. Well, you know, but I think what Kevin was saying is that, and Kevin, uh, maybe I'm wrong when we're well, listening to you, so please correct me. But I think he was sort of saying, in lieu of, I don't, I don't. It sounds like that might be dead in the water is finding hard evidence, um, but that well, creating I, at least the majority of it being planted and creating sort of a, a walking area might be the the compromise to create, you know, to do that. So just keep in mind that the worst case scenario would be that we actually find graves. I mean, the idea of doing this excavation and, and, uh, and uh, doing and you know, checking on this, the idea would be not to find anything. <laughs> you know, we're not trying to find something because if you do find something, then the thing sits in stasis for years while they, the coroner comes in and they, you know, these grave sites and then the Bureau of Indian Affairs gets involved. I mean, it's a huge, long process that involves federal authorities. So, I mean, you want to try not to do this. But, the, you know, the concept, the, the real conception is sensitivity to the concept of potential graves, which are, we, we, we know pretty surely that that those walls, they were built, those walls were built a hundred years after that graveyard was established. Uh, so you know, they don't necessarily contain the whole thing. Um, you know, I just, you know, in some ways, you know, the idea of doing this thing and, and, and then people saying, oh, well, you spent this money to find nothing. Well, that would be great. <laughs> then you can build the park, do whatever you want, because there's nothing there. I doubt that that would be the case, but you know, who knows? Michael, would, we, would, we, would a ground radar survey determine whether or not these graves are? No, not anymore. Um, you'd have to do this excavate, this major excavation thing. Um, Dr. Curious, I wouldn't radar tell you what you're looking for. It helps us show where there's unmarked graves in the burial ground. Uh, because A, it's flat, and B, it's undisturbed. Um, ground radar actually works with a, a period of uh, essentially by bouncing sound waves off layers of ground and then when it hits something when bodies decompose and grave sites decompose you're not actually the echo that the ping they get back is not from bones or uh coffins or any solid things necessarily it's from a physical process of decomposition in the soil that actually affects how the radar waves penetrate the soil so all it says is there was something here but when there's been this level of disruption um, supposedly, and uh, granted, I am not an expert archaeologist. Um, I have been told, however, by both the state archaeologist and the consultant I did meet with that ground radar survey is no longer uh, a possibility for this site, um, given the amount of disruption that they've had. So, um, you know, there you go. I, you know, I just think the thing at the end of the day is to try to find something, you know, respectful. And, you know, the missing component in this that, and no one has address this to my knowledge, is what does the Nipmuc Nation think about all of this? Um, I did reach out to the chief. Um, I did speak to her briefly. Uh, I was hoping for a call back. I did not hear back from her. I'm gonna try again. Um, I, I think they should, you know, frankly, in some ways we shouldn't be involved in this at all. That St. Mark's and the Nipmuc Nation should decide what is the appropriate course of events for a piece parcel they own, and then we should be follow back and support. 
which is how this thing should have gone in the first place. And the only reason we're in this dilemma is that we've decided for Byzantine reasons to spend public funds on a piece of private property. So, I mean, the real players here are not us. So well, I, maybe, and maybe that suggests the, cause I, I frankly, I, 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 what I fear is a sort of, I think you, you make as a, as if we have a, a position as a commission, we make the position known and then the people who have the real authority and the power to act upon it can do act upon it or not act upon it. Um, and the way it, it ends up being um, litigated in the, the larger arena, you know, town meeting or at the ballot box is another story um, that we say, this is what we think um, and St. Mark's do what you will and, and select board or you know, people making the decisions can do what they will. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see any other path forward. I mean, how, can I ask Michael, how much money are we talking about to survey this property for graves in the manner in which it's now necessary? Um, I don't know because um, the, well, when I spoke to them, the ground had frozen and snowed, so they can't really you know, tell you this. Um, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars. We're not talking hundreds of thousands. Well, I, you know, I, to me, I, it's St. Mark's property, that, right? Let's, everybody, you know, needs to remember that. And if they're going to have that on their hands. If they decide to do nothing about it, I mean, and, and the alarm has been raised and they've been told what the potential is there. I'm not sure what else we can do. I mean, I, I'm not willing to, you know, for instance, to pitch a tent and protest and sit there. Maybe other people are, you know, um, and it, it, I, I'm just not, I'm just not sure what you can do. Um, I think it's, it, I, you know, I think there's a lot of people and not just the six of us that wish it had gone forward a slightly differently, but well, you know, I, we could write a letter to the trustees and headmaster of St. Mark's and say that it is our strong recommendation that you have this site surveyed before any construction is involved as the owner of this property. Mm -hmm. You know, and that we seriously think that there are, I mean, we've written the Slackman, we have not written St. Mark's, but we really seriously think that there are issues and put them on notice officially that there, you know, that this is something that we think that they should do and potentially undertake at their expense um, in order to do this. And, you know, that may alter the dynamics of this. Um, that, that would be, I think that I would support that. I would support it in uh, just in, in terms, we make sure that we're not so much putting them on notice, um, which sounds ominous, um, but letting them know in a friendly way that um, we have concerns and we sure, we're sure that they would share them. Well, I mean, they do share them to a degree. I mean, I met with the CFO uh, for hours about this um, and actually took a tour of the school and it was, I mean, it's very nice. Um, they're nice people, they're nice folks over there. I mean, I, nothing, nothing personal, but I, you know, I, again, because this is probably, if this were town land, this would be very clear. Um, you know, it would be our responsibility to try to go out and raise this money and do this stuff. But it's like, you know, if they want to take that risk, and, you know, interestingly, I was told by the chief that they had, St. Mark's had just reached out to the Nipmuc Nation to do some educational activities, um, you know, for them about, you know, Native American uh, history. Because, of course, their school sits on the Native American village site, um, pretty clearly. And uh, she said, it's pretty ironic that they're digging up our graves <laughs> after they asked us for educational opportunities. So, I mean, that conversation might be worthwhile to, you know, to, to have further on this. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, if the people of the town don't care, if the Nipmuc Nation don't care, and if St. Mark's doesn't care, all we can do have, have said is that we think this is a bad idea. And at the end of the day, that's all the power we have. But I find it hard to believe that no one cares about this. 
for all the myriad reasons that have enumerated. I so think, we, I think we, people do care. I think it's, as kind of Kevin alluded to earlier, that it's just so complex. Um, and it's, there's a lot of politics involved and it's just like, I think people do care, but it's like, what can, what can we do? You know, what we're in a position to have our voices heard, but you know, I don't, I don't know if other, I don't know if the general public feels that way. Well, we've been charged by the general public to be in charge of our historical resources and to preserve them. I mean, that is, that is why we're all sitting here this evening. So I'll tell you what. I, I, well, I you Michael, you know, the part of the problem is that again, it goes back to the fact that this disputed land, although, you know, there's a proposal obviously that will come to town meeting to, to convey the easement and allow the, the town to build at town expense, this park on St. Mark's property. Um, ultimately, it's their property. Um, and, and that's, I think, where we have the sort of issue. I, again, I look down, I'm over here looking again at your amphitheater um, rendering. And I just can't help but think, I mean, that could be an asset um, that St. Mark's might enjoy. I mean, they might even sponsor it. You know, that's a real pipe dream, but actually in other words, <laughs> pay for it, part of it, because their kids could, use it constantly with our blessing, you know, sit around there, hold these outdoor classes in conjunction, by the way, with the historical society. I could see Michael Weisson lecturing to eager eyed uh, St. Mark's students. Uh, there's your uh, <laughs> for the evening. Um, but you know, I, I, I mean, more, more. I, 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 I really do see this sort of uh, opportunity for a kind of synergy right there and it but I just I the conviction I have is this this cannot be done with a lot of rancor if we can't find a way to pull pull people together and just say we want to get it done I don't give a damn what's been gone on in the past you know we got to make it work we're not going to get anywhere and it's just going to be a lot of air and we've you know just wasted an hour and a half of our time and everybody else's who's listening that we have to somehow you know um all right well so i mean i'm gonna say let me, say, let me i've been quiet to kind of hear everybody out. i want to just summarize if i can uh i completely agree that the uh, amphitheater is a wonderful idea i hope we can make it happen Two, it's all wrong that uh, the uh, potential uh, Native American burial sites are being ignored, but we had a session with selectmen. I think there was a state representative talking about how they really were required to, and there was a letter written. If that's all been ignored, then to Kevin's point, that's water under the dam. Thirdly, from a practical point of view, it's never a winning strategy to go up against somebody who's really the owner of an issue and tell them you're wrong. It, it generally does not pan out. So ignore everything that's happened and just put your best foot forward. I suggest a letter that's a joint letter between the Historical uh, Commission and the Nipmuc Nation, ending what you do, then put that down, uh, and then secondly, come up with a proposal for this amphitheater in a way that is independent arbitrary, and thirdly, do not go looking for the missing money. It's gone, I don't know how it was spent, but you're not going to find it, and moreover, you're never going to get anybody to admit how it was spent. Done deal. That's, that, unfortunately, that's just that's just the reality of the situation. So, to Kevin's point, we've got to look for ways to move forward in a positive way. Don't be adversarial, uh, and and just try and make the best out of the situation. And recognize the last point is that it is St. Mark's land, and you can only recommend but make them aware. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, I thank you all for your opinions. Um, I'd like to make a motion that Mr. Miller write that letter to uh, St. Mark's uh, in a lovely and sympathetic sort of way. Um, just pointing out to him our concerns. Oops, down dog. Pointing out <laughs> concerns, down, down. Uh, and you know, just reiterating our position that this survey should really take place before any construction, any type of park construction would go on. Uh, unless there would be an agreement to simply reforest the parcel, in which case this wouldn't probably need to have happen. Does that sound like a reasonable proposition to everybody? 
I like Jim's idea of having the NIPMUC uh, chief involved, if that's possible to sign on, but. Well, we can try. I mean, I, I didn't get the response back, so um, I, I can pursue it again. But in any, in any event, I mean, so, and I, and I do agree about the separation of issues. Um, I think ultimately, Jim is correct. This is a, the issue the finances can be battled on, on town meeting floor. Uh, and don't believe me, will be. Um, but, you know, let's try to, I, I, my intention of this park thing, uh, an amphitheater thing was simply to launch the issue out as an alternative and then let other more talented and uh, advanced planning people, you know, take this over. So um, I will entertain, well, I will propose a motion actually that Mr. Miller write this letter to St. Mark's as we've just outlined. Uh, do I hear second? Second. That can Rebecca Dean's row. Very good. Shall we vote? Ms. Battles. Yes. Mr. Miller. Hmm. I have to help the graph myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what happens when you're. That's what happens when you're the great conciliator. I mean, you know, it's like start conciliating. Fine. I. Ms. Annie. Yes. Mr. Jim. Yes. With an offer. To Kevin, then I'll be happy to either co-write or review with you, and I would recommend that you write the letter with a space for a signature for the tribe and to send it over to him saying, you can make some edits, we'd like to send this with you. So, yeah, we can. I think we have to also be very careful not to speak for them um, in any sort of way, because I think their their views may may not necessarily be ours. I don't know but, that. I, uh, but, no, I, can I just say that my, my intention with this would simply just to be the layout what we think right might be there and that it would be prudent and respectful to for them not for the town of Southboro but for them to spend the money to ascertain that there isn't anything there. yes exactly and that um, would be, and that would be great news and, and, and educational for their students by the way yeah, <laughs> to yeah, see that going on wait wait stop I need to complete the vote we're okay. still we're, we're voting <laughs> Ms. Rebecca? Yes. Okay, now, now further comment. Okay, so that well, way, I, I will now, say that my thoughts as I. Uh, to Rebecca's point, this is a, you know, the, the, the three buzzwords in academia right now are diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this would be, a, sure would be a lesson mm -hmm. in those things and also respect. Um, so I would hope that St. Mark's would choose, and you know what? If they spent the money and it cleared the field, I think we would all be very happy. I would be. There's nothing there. Great. Build your oh. park, put your monument, do whatever you want. Maybe to bring back the swing sets or whatever. I, I, fantastic. You know? Um, Even the dead tree. <laughs> hey, uh, that's somebody else's decision. You know, it's not ours. So I, I'd be fully in support. I mean, and everybody could could sleep happily at night knowing that um, you know we try to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. The end. Yes. Okay. Um, I agree, and we're going to move on. Um, and uh, the next thing is reports from the treasurer. Hey, that's me. Oh, I'm good. Um, I did two things today. I submitted our final invoice for the spectrum. So, and then hopefully um, tomorrow, hopefully I'll run over to UPS with that um, equipment. Okay. So, so we'll be done with spectrum. Yep. So you did, I don't know if you saw on this, you know, uh, so I have a little something to add to this. Um, the town internet that they've installed is not functional um, and cannot seemingly be made functional. Um, it has it. So incredibly, the entire town of Southboro functions off one 250 megabyte upload portal. I'm not sure if I have that correct, but 250 was the number that's used. Um, most households have like gigabyte service these days. So this and I, when I say the entire town, I don't mean just the townhouse. I mean the library, the fire station, DPW, and now we've added onto it. So um, 
the stuff that we're trying to do in terms of getting these huge clouds up and down from you know uh, huge files up and down these big photo files and video files and things they've been sending um the entire system is essentially collapsed we're getting upload speeds of 30 kilobytes per second and then download speeds of 40 or you know whatever it is where they should be like 700 or 800 and jason's been over numerous times he says there's not really much that can be done because everyone's trying to use the same tiny little portal and it just gets jammed um with the result of which is that the thermostats which formerly were online are now offline and will not sync back up to this and the computer major backup for all the work that's been going on over there is also not functioning so unless they can come up with some sort of solution to this, I have a feeling that we're gonna to need to go back to some sort of not spectrum, but maybe to Verizon or some other private service after all of this, two years of, of work. But um, I, you know, I, it's, it's bad, <laughs> it's bad. Um, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I, I guess the town doesn't care about you know, high speed in the sense that it uses it primarily for emails and things, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, but in terms of actually, you know, mega cloud data storage of huge photo documents, this is not working. So that brings up the question of the budget. Um, I don't think we should actually send back that additional $500. Uh, it was, is that already set in stone? Um, oh, from this year's budget? Well, from next year's. I, I, what I'm saying is that I think- Oh yeah, no, that's set in stone. That's done. Great. Well, anyway, so um, you know, I'm very sad to report this because we thought that after all of this work, and boy, was it a lot of work, that this thing would be cranking. And what did Jim say about upgrading the uh, town's connection? I'm sorry, Jim? What did, what did Jay say about upgrading the town's connection? Two to three years out. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Is, is that a budget uh, delay or logistical delay? What's what would cause it? I, I don't I don't know, but uh, I welcome any of you to come over and watch the little dial go up to thirty on download. <laughs> watch the little dial come up to forty or fifty, you know, <laughs> for upload. Actually, interestingly, we can upload faster than we can download, so we can upload at like fifty or sixty, and the download is like thirty, which normally is the reverse. I. I have no idea. He suggested that we plug in directly to the service rather than using the wireless. Um, I, I have no idea. I don't understand this at all. They came and spent hours and hours and hours over there pulling the wires and putting up this you know, station and doing all this stuff. And we thought we'd be zooming right along. And we are, are you, zooming. Our connection is not hardwired to their uh, routers. It's all, only wireless. It's currently only wireless. And then we could look at, for hundred bucks, you could look at upgrading that because maybe that's your bottleneck. Well, he's in, they are going to try that because um, the it turns out that the building has hard wire portals all throughout it from its previous iteration. So they're going to try to to wire in directly. Um, but it's to the point that our we can't even get the the printer to print anymore. I mean, you know, the wireless printer won't pick up the wireless signal because it's so the signal's weak. But there's just no data flow through it. I, you know, I'm not an expert in any of this, but it's 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 just hugely disappointing to have battled this for years and years and years, just to wind up back in this position of nowhere land. Could we use some of the funds that we had earmarked for um, the minute taker to continue the spectrum service? Well, we've already canceled the spectrum service okay. and it was it was expensive. I think we would do better if we were gonna do this to get Verizon. Yeah, uh, we were up to $110 a month with spectrum. Yeah, it, it was getting bonkers and yeah. so, I think there's also some pricing, nonprofit pricing. I think the society would be willing to throw in some money to this too. Um, so just so everyone knows that we're in this process over there um, of digitizing all of this material and they have made great advances. We've picked up uh, two or three actual non-tax volunteers, just real volunteers. Um, and um, they have been going gung ho. They've scanned and digitized, I think almost 2000 pieces uh, photos and other documents within the last three months or so. Um, and we're up on Google, uh, on the Google Drive where this is all going to, to back up. I think we're up to 200 gigabytes of data up there. So, I mean, we really have done an amazing amount of stuff. And 
it looks like if these folks and they're super nice, I are willing to stay with us for another six months or so that we might have digitized most of the paper collection. And we're talking thousands of items um, that would then be available for, uh, for use from anybody in town. But none of that happens if you can't actually communicate with the cloud. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of a problem. So we're gonna, we're gonna be working on that. Um, so, okay, anyway, so I interrupted you. So it's, we can't get our money back. That's fine. Okay. Well, sorry. No, because yeah, yeah that, the, the budget's already was okay. set to be in by like December. Okay. Um, and then I also got, um, Dave came by the townhouse today with his recording secretary contract. So that's all set. So um, as he continues to invoice, he will get paid through, at least through, um, the end of this fiscal year. Okay. Annie, anything happening over there at the PC CPC that we should know about? Um, so we are our last meeting was um, December 2nd, same day as our last historical meeting, which feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> so I, I I'm trying to uh, rack my brain for what we talked about then. Um, so basically we're just getting ready for town meeting. Um, finalizing the CPC budget for next year um, and the associated uh, warrant articles that um, will be voted on in terms of that budget. Um, there is only one proposal for um, projects this year. It's an open space project. Um, we actually have not had the formal presentation yet. Um, I think we're expecting to do that next week when we meet. Um, one interesting thing that I wanted to um, share with you guys is the apparently um, our finance department had um, a very successful year in terms of investment income on our CPC accounts. So where we thought we would be, um, you know, kind of max, maxed out um, budget wise with our projects last year, we actually have a little bit more than anticipated based on um, revenue from investment income. Um, and the commission is talking about um, potentially paying down some bonds earlier or you know what to do if anything, um, now that we have this additional money. Um, so that's to be, um, you know, to be uh, determined, further conversation is needed. Um, just wanted to update you guys that the, um, the landscape is a little bit different than we had anticipated after last town meeting. Well, that's good to hear because we may have a proposal going forward in terms of trying to, they're finishing up the architectural survey on the museum mm -hmm. um, they were out the other day to, to look at the stuff and there's some more problems there than, uh, than meets the eye as you can expect. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see where that's, uh, where that's going, but that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then we have a little revised addition to our agenda, uh, support letter request from the trails committee. I sent you guys uh, this, we had supported this last year previously. Um, uh, I read the proposal uh, from Catherine, uh, obviously, you know, linking all these assets up via the town, it seems to be a very advisable thing. So um, does anyone, let's, let's make ourselves easy here uh, tonight. Does anyone disagree that we should support this? There we go. All right, so I will make a motion that we write a letter. I will, I will do this this time, Kevin. I won't voice this on you. Uh, write a letter of support. Their grant application is due on the 1st of February, so I need to kind of crack that out. Um, just a letter expressing report, support for the project is outlined in the uh, material I sent you. Um, do I hear a second? Second. second. Okay, multiple seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, let's vote on that. Ms. Battles. Yes. Mr. Miller. Aye. Ms. Pfaff. Yes. Mr. Blaschke. Aye. Ms. Deansrow. Yes. And my son is aye. All right, that brings us to that. I know Catherine will be very, very thankful. Um, they're great folks over there. We love our friends at Trails. Hopefully they'll get back into the museum one day to be able to meet again. It would be great. Getting a little lonely over at the museum. Um, any other business that may legally come before the commission on the proviso that Open meeting law may defer discussion until a future date. One. I have just one small thing I wanted to um, propose or bring up with the commission. Um, it, it may I may I bring that up, Michael? Sure, sure, of course. 
Um, so some of you guys may have heard about the car crash that happened on um, Framingham Road at the end of December. Um, a car crashed into number 89 Framingham Road and caused extensive fire damage. Um, it was an older home, um, I, I assume historical. Um, from looking at the photos on the outside, I think that they were part of our historic sign program. Um, yeah, they were. <laughs> they were. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know what their plans are for, you know, repair or, you know, re, um, rehabilitation of their home. But I'm wondering if we should, um, you know, send the family another sign. Yep. Um, just as kind of a um, you know, goodwill gesture, you know, in, in these really hard times that they're they're experiencing. Well, was, the know, sign, was the sign damaged? Oh, oh yeah, the entire front of the home was yeah. um is is burned and will need ex, you know rebuild rebuilding. Um I would also, you know, think put yes. So I, I think that's innocuous enough to to not yes. I, I have I know I know the owners and stuff too. Um I can order a new one, no problem. I have more of our signs, um, free sign program. That's great. I have more. Um, I just have to make sure, I believe Bob had hip surgery. So I, um, but a couple other people received their signs recently. So he must be better, but I'll give him a call. It's 89 Framingham, isn't it? Yeah, yeah 89 it Framingham yeah. Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. That's a, that's a very nice idea, Annie, thank you. Yeah, I'll have it shipped right to them. Yeah, well, and let's, um, we should probably send, Actually, I think it should be sent to us and maybe we should just drop it off or send it or something because um, we'd like to include a note. I mean, all right, well, then I'll have I'll have Bob send it to, to me and then I can include a note. Is that fine? Yeah, that's great. I mean, we should just you know, otherwise I'm going to wonder what the hell. What the hell getting I, you you want to throw in one of your nice books or anything like that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll talk to you when I get it. OK. Um, yeah, no, I I actually have meaning, I didn't see the notice of that. I've been meaning to go and look uh, look at that. Also, I think that there might be some other properties on Main Street that we might wanna nominate um, for an historic sign. Um, I'm thinking in particular of that wonderful storefront. Uh, we've talked about this before. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? I've reached out to Dean and Bob a couple of times via email and I haven't heard from them about it. Um, what number was, is that? I, uh, I don't remember the number. Um, so they were. He was at the. I think it's, it's twelve. Dane. I'm pretty sure it's Dane. twelve. Dane, not Dean. Dane. Yes, Dane. Yep. Dane. Um, he was in the museum the other day, uh, talking with Patty and stuff, and was picking up some maps and things. So we can. I can send him another email um, because I've asked him to like be on the house tour. I've done stuff like that, and I didn't. I didn't um, hear back. Um, and I've known them. Uh, they have a son who's Jack's age. So um, I didn't want to foist it on them too. Like I would have happily had one made and just delivered it, but I don't want to foist it on them in case they actually don't want one for some reason or another. All right, well, let's contact them because I also, I'll, I'll, sure. I, I, Patty has another email address that might be a better one too. Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah, Patty's uh, on this call. Hey, Patty, can you send me that email address? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's gone. Oh, no, she's still here. No, she's not. She's hanging I out. I see her name right up there. She's hanging out. She's hanging yeah. out. Text me, Patty. Text me. Text me, Patty. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would say that about wraps it up for this evening. One, la one last thing, Michael. Oh, she just, <laughs> thanks, Patty. <laughs> Are we prepared to make a public note? of the very good news that we are in receipt of with regard to the National Register. Oh. Oh, yes, of course. Um, we are uh, We are very excited. Um, and I, I was going to wait till we actually got the documentation and stuff. Ah, OK. Uh, but that's right. I mean, uh, we have been granted status uh, for the National Register District as of the 29th of December. Um, the all the buildings uh, that were included in the survey have been added to the National Register of Historic Places, including the old burial ground, by the way. Um, uh, so uh, that is a huge deal. I wanna thank again, our dear late colleague, Kate Madison, who uh, worked to make this happen tirelessly. Uh, Kate, we'll hoist one to you later, but uh, it's, been a, it's a, been a wonderful triumph and um, now we have to build on that. The reason I wanted that budget back too, Kate Battles, was that I, Sorry. I, I wanted some signs, you know, we need signs to mark the district. Um, 
but maybe the historical society can help well, them. But signs are budgeted for for houses so i mean well, signs are budgeted in for next year um recording secretary is budgeted in and i doubt we're going to get that but perhaps our um perhaps we won't. how can they cut they can't cut our recording secretary out what are they going to take minutes for us no but one of you is going to take minutes no <laughs> no you cannot I mean, you know how hard this is. You cannot participate in yes. this, these things. Yeah, I'm a recording secretary. I know. I'm good. Yes. No, yeah. impossible. I mean, it's impossible. But, it, it, but it's that's that's the case. Didn't they say any non-permitting board? Yeah. Oh, uh, so not allowed to have one. Uh, it's permitting, financial, and elected boards. Um, well. All I say is this, if you're going to spend $290,000 on St. Mark's property, you can spend $1,500 to give us a recording secretary so that we can properly fulfill our legal duties, especially since we keep getting asked for these minutes in a timely manner and an increasingly level, complex level of detail uh, to uh, go along with the demolition delay bylaw and all the other uh, possibilities and problems that we have with uh, fulfillment. Yeah, you're preaching to the choir. Listen, I know. I, 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 I know. I, I, <laughs> I will lose several jobs and I will lose money um, at, with the, the rate that they have it proposed. Oh, it's terrible. That, so, that, yeah, um, I mean, I hear, but I, but I'm telling you, you will likely not have a recording secretary next year. It will have to be a member. Um, so if we are still magically granted our $3,000 budget, perhaps we'll be able to um, use it to denote the um, area, you know, the National Historic District area. Well, all I got to say is if we lose our recording secretary, then our minutes are going to read met, talked, <laughs> adjourned. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, yeah. And that is a level of detail that is going to be submitted because there's no possible way that any of us have the time on top of every one of our other duties. I, you know, and frankly, since we've been asked on multiple occasions and the Board of Selectmen have questioned us on multiple occasions about very specific details in the minutes, um, you know, not having those, then that's fine. Then our answer is we don't know because I don't remember. I don't remember what we talked about December 2nd. I, I agree with Annie. It seems like, I mean, when was that? That was like five years ago. A lifetime. I think it's, it's, there's a, it, it's going to cause some, a lot of difficulties. Trust me. It's um because it's a huge undertaking. The amount of work that I put in to do all the minutes that I do is um it's, it's, in, it's a ton of work and it's um and I, not every board needs a recording secretary, um, but we also have the demo delay bylaw. It's, it's complicated, but uh, I, I have no power over this one. So well, I would move on town if if it comes to it, I would get up in town for to move to restore our budget and argue because that is absolutely a false savings to try to uh, you know to save fifteen hundred dollars and then expose to whatever legal liability or whatever issues there are for this. I mean that's absolutely bonkers. but well, I, you know, and anyway. it's a legal document in um you know that my name is signed to, so I will I, you know it has to when I do it personally, um, it, it has to be quality that I'm comfortable signing my name to as well. So um, yeah, it's, definitely, I mean, it's definitely an issue, but I would just prepare for the worst. Yeah, well, because of course, if crap, you know, hits the fan ever, the first thing that they summon are those minutes to, you know, to look over to see who said what, when, where. Yep. Anyway. So, and my What's that responsibility? It's not, a, it's not a budget item. It's that the select, the select board won't approve the contract. So I don't even think it is something that we could um, appeal on town floor. Well, is that, Kate, is that historic, your- the historical commission, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know about that. No, the historical commission can hire and, and do whatever it wants. I mean, it can hire people. It has the legal right to retain property. It can enter into its own contracts. There's no way that the select board could have anything to say about that. I mean, if we, all we need is the budget and we can, we as a group decide how to actually spend that budget. And I mean, that is written into the uh, founding legislation of, of state law of these historical commissions. So, you know, that as a committee or, you know, a, a standing committee or other issues, that may be very true that the selectmen can control that, but not for the historical commission. Um, I'm just, you know, I just know how hard it has been and then how hard it has been to get these minutes out because everyone has busy lives and then it's hard to be, you know, I mean, already we've been here for 
two hours um, and then to spend another two hours. I know how long uh, you know, Dave takes to do this stuff. I mean, it's a lot of hard, hard work and back and forth with our members making sure that what we said, it was recorded properly so people can understand what's going on in town. Yep. Anyway. anyway, I know I'm preaching. I hear that. Part. I hear that. Well, um, there. Ladies and gentlemen, did we set meeting dates for uh, 2022? I don't think so. Can we just go ahead and set those now through June? Boy, yes. Um, Kevin, you're not teaching nights this semester, right? I am not. Okay. So Mike. does anyone have a series of nights that they, I mean, because I would either go to Tuesdays or Thursdays. I actually, you know, I'd probably go to, I'd probably stick on these Thursdays because this is a low intensity day for these meetings in town. And there's generally um, meetings. So I have CPC on um, Thursdays once a month. Oh yeah, that's um, right. But I'm, if like, I actually really like Thursdays, but if we just select a different week, it, that's ideal for me. Yeah, that's fine. All right, how about um, Thursday the 10th? Anyone else I'm not bad on Thursdays? But that Thursday's good. Any which week of the month is the regular so we can just automatically skip it? So we don't have a regular week of the month. Um, so actually, Michael, we do have a meeting on the 10th of February. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but then, for example, our, our March meeting is not until the 24th. Um, so it's not, it, it really depends on the, the, you know, town meeting and the schedule of things that needs to get done before uh, the meeting. Well, shall we target the third Thursday of the month or the first? Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Why don't we target the third Thursday of the month? That would make it the 17th um so the 17th yeah that's okay. okay um february 17th um that would also be march 17th we'll meet yeah. on st patrick's day and maybe can hoist a glass of green beverage okay april that would be the 15th which is good friday uh yeah that's the 14th <laughs> I yep. do have CPC that night, unfortunately. Okay. Wait, anyway, the third Thursday in April is the twenty-first. Mm -hmm. It's sorry. April break. Um, I don't. That, it's April vacation. I'm not. I have no. Sadly, no current plans. But I'm just throwing well, that okay, out let's there. Let's just move to Wednesday the thirteenth for that month. For that month, is that all right? Uh, yeah, that sounds great. Actually, April fourteenth. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um. April thirteenth. Uh, Wednesdays are hard just because Andrew usually has advisory meetings on Wednesday nights. Um, and with, with Dottie, that's bedtime's really right. hard. All uh, right. Um, Monday, the 11th. Good. Planning board. Planning board. <laughs> but I can do Tuesday, the 12th. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's fine. That works. Okay. May the third Thursday would be the 19th of May. Perfect. Oh, sorry. That's uh, CPC. <laughs> that's what? The uh, CPC. We have that on the 19th. So okay. maybe the, maybe the they third. Get, they need to get off our third Thursdays. I mean, come on. <laughs> All right, let's maybe sorry. go to second Thursdays. All right, let's go. To, how about the 12th? That works. Okay. CPC. I think I need to get off those Thursdays. Um, June. The third would be the 16th. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, I thought you were going to say the ninth and the way of CPC that. And no. we're, we, we didn't pick a, a set, um, you know, a set date. So I can do the 16th. All right. Tell them going forward, we want the third Thursdays. They need to move to some other day. <laughs> okay. They'll love that. They just love me already. Um, Okay, that's enough for now, don't you think, through June? Yeah. And then we'll worry about the summer. Yeah. I'd like to give us the summer off again. Um, oh, crap. Wait a second. Hang on. I am actually going to Italy. Hang on. Maybe. Um, what did we just set this for? The 14th? Oh, no. That. Oh, no. 12th. We set it for April, right? April 12th. Yep. Yeah. Okay. If the gods are willing, I'm and COVID is not crazy, I'm actually headed for Rome for Easter. Mm. Roma. 
down to a villa on the Bay of Sorrento, outside of Naples. I'm a great it's chaperone. Only, it's only the fact that we're um, being recorded on Zoom that prevents me from flipping you an obscene gesture. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Agreed. Not only that, I'm an invited guest, so I'm not paying for this. It's great. Uh, Michael, will our meetings be at six o'clock? Yes. Okay. Just confirming so I can update my calendar. Yes. All righty. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen. One, one last thing. Out of out of respect for the, the masochists who've sat through this meeting as attendees, are we scheduled public comment? No. Um, we generally don't schedule public comment because we okay. expect people to raise their hand and, and uh, cheer up if they want to. Um, if anyone is out there of our four attendees, or if you have anything to say to us, um, we are just raise your hand and we'll happy be happy to hear you. Going once, going twice, gone. All right, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Battles. Yes. Miller. Aye. Faf. Yes. Flashkey. Aye. Deans Row. Yes. Boyson. Aye. Another meeting where everyone is unanimously agreed. And so I bid you a unanimous good night and thank you for coming to yet another episode of the Southboro Historical Commission. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night, night everyone. Bye-bye.